The landmass that now makes up Patagonia was once home to some of the largest animals ever to roam the Earth. Animals with big names like Titanosaurus, Dreadnoughtus, and even the very debatable Gigantosaurus. But despite what the Disney Studios will have you believe, these weren't carnivores. They were sauropods, colossal herbivores with very long necks. Still, giants like this got large for a reason, and that reason had very sharp teeth. Patagonia's late Cretaceous top predator of choice was Giganotosaurus, a bipedal theropod that was one of the largest terrestrial carnivores ever. So the Gigantosaurus theme song gets one thing right, he was really enormous. And movies like Jurassic World Domination give a shot at what a Giganotosaurus vs T-Rex battle may have looked like, as well as their impression of the terrifying Giganotosaurus roar. But how much of this is artistic license? And was Giganotosaurus truly the largest carnivore the world has ever seen? In this video, we'll tease facts from fiction and find out if it's time for the tyrant Lizard King to step down from his throne. First, let's set the scene. Around 100 million years ago, prehistoric Patagonia was a very different place. Far from the rocky, windswept and glacial vistas we see there today, in the late Cretaceous, the warmer climate of the time brought a patchwork of lush vegetation, conifer forests, floodplains and savannas. This diverse landscape lends itself to an equally varied array of dinosaur species, and the tree branches would have been packed full of early birds, whose agile flight would have allowed them to keep up with the variety of pterosaurs that filled the sky. Back on lands, Patagonia was home to some of the largest dinosaurs ever described, the indomitable titanosaurs, growing up to 37 meters long and weighing over 70 tons, were close to the largest land animals ever to exist. But growing to these almost incomprehensible sizes requires a lot of work and a lot of food. So not only would the resources have to be plentiful, but they'd also have to be an evolutionary pressure to get this big. Enter Giganotosaurus. Between 99.6 and 95 million years ago, this was the boogeyman of Patagonia. Giganotosaurus was a member of the shark-toothed dinosaurs, a group of theropods that specialized in hunting large animals, and this was the largest one known so far. Estimates of its weight range from 4 tons to 14 tons, but size estimates are far more realistic, with some fossils being 70% complete. And what these tell us is that this large hunter could have reached 13 meters long, longer even than the largest T-Rex estimates, and very slightly taller at the hip too, at around 4 meters. This was one of the largest terrestrial carnivores to have ever lived, and likely the largest ever in South America. There are some clues as to what Giganotosaurus would have looked like as well. Its skull alone was 1.8 meters long, and it was slenderer, lighter, and in V-shaped compared with the chunkier T-Rex. The bones on the nose have rough connective surfaces that suggest that this species carried some kind of display or ornamental growth on its face, perhaps a crest. It had longer arms than T-Rex, though still reduced, and an 8-ton Giganotosaurus had a suspected metabolism comparable with a 1-ton mammalian hunter. That's pretty hot for a reptile, which would give it an edge when it came to chasing down prey. This species has pushed the envelope in the debate around the maximum sizes of theropods, but how does it compare in behavior to T-Rex? The relatively warm blood of Giganotosaurus would have allowed it to grow fast, and in the presence of so many animals to feed on, and so many other animals that would have fed on it, this would have been a good strategy. Nothing much would have been able to frighten a fully grown Giganotosaurus. In fact, being scary was pretty much its thing. The skull, being narrow, was lightweight, and the enormous fenestra found in it further reduced this mass, allowing Giganotosaurus to carry more power at the other end. Still, this wasn't built for high speed, and it was perhaps better suited to agility, with a neck that could handle rapid sideways motions of the head. It would have had substantially less bite force than the T-Rex, but this wouldn't have made it any less intimidating. Giganotosaurus had a different, equally terrifying hunting strategy. Known relations of this species may give us clues to its social life, as there is evidence that its smaller relatives were social, or at least gregarious, and they could have hunted in packs. These smaller members of the shark-toothed family predated upon sauropods, so it's pretty likely that Giganotosaurus did too, and at this time it would have been chasing down the ancestors of Argentinosaurus, perhaps as a group. An enormous gape, much wider than that of T-Rex, also suggests that it had some pretty huge appetites, but there were some very stark differences in the way it would have killed. T-Rex jaws are thick, 
heavy and built for power, that Giganotosaurus would have been able to close its jaws much more rapidly. And while the bone-crushing ability of the Tyrannosaurus was unmatched, Giganotosaurus would have instead been able to bite and shear off chunks of flesh from the very large animals such as juvenile Titanosaurus. These two strategies are wildly different, and that explains the contrast that we find in both of these theropods' teeth. As mentioned, this was a shark-toothed dinosaur in the Cacarodontosauridae family. And these dinosaurs are recognized for the steak knives that they carry in their mouths. Cacarodontosaurids had recurved, bladed teeth, perfect for slicing through meat. And these teeth were laterally compressed, and the blades serrated on both sides, with three times the amount of serration as the much rounder T-Rex teeth. Again, these weren't built for power, so neither the teeth nor the jaws would have been able to handle the force of bone crushing. But after killing its prey, Giganotosaurus would have used the smaller premaxilla teeth near the front to shear the meat from the bone. This was a fast snapping scissor-like attack that was designed for the chunky muscle of sauropods. And this is frightening enough, but what would it have sounded like? It's quite hard to record a real theropod roar nowadays, so the sound coming from Rexy in Jurassic Park was made in the studio. It was a composite of various animals, including a baby elephant, an alligator, and a koala bear. These were all manipulated in post to create the iconic sound that still haunts 90s kids to this day. Later, in Jurassic World domination, Giganotosaurus itself made a sound that was a combination of mules, stallions, and a lion named Daisy as well as the alligator rumble that works so well with Rexy in Jurassic Park. But prehistoric dinosaurs don't appear to have had vocal organs, not at least in the same way that we see in modern birds or anything found in koalas or elephants either. So figuring out what they might have sounded like is a bit tricky. But some suggest the AirPods could have just used voiceless sounds to communicate, like the closed mouth grunting of crocodilians. And when these are scaled up to the size of Giganotosaurus, they make a very bassy and very unsettling low-frequency sound that may have traveled long distances. As for roaring, it's unlikely that they would have been able to produce any sound that's familiar to us, especially anything like those found in the movies, but there are some fun guesses out there by audio engineers and paleontologists alike who've taken their shot at what a dinosaur might have sounded like. And if you want to check out some of these, we'll link to a couple of them in the description below. So, Giganotosaurus was the biggest predator of the late Cretaceous in South America, and possibly even bigger than the traditional King T-Rex. But being that the two species were very similar in size, what would a matchup between these two monsters have looked like? Full disclosure, these two species would never have really met. T-Rex hadn't been invented during the reign of Giganotosaurus, and the pair didn't exist on the same landmass either. Still, as Hollywood reminds us, we can do whatever we like in the realm of fiction, so here goes. In Jurassic World Domination, Giganotosaurus gets double-teamed by a T-Rex and a very useful Therizinosaurus. The latter would more likely have been eaten by T-Rex than recruited as a business partner, so let's count that out. Now it's just the two of them. T-Rex, with its unsurpassed power, bone-crushing jaws and thick, heavy skull, could cause some serious damage to its opponent, but Giganotosaurus was larger, perhaps substantially heavier, and likely had more stamina than the ambush predator. It also had razor-sharp teeth of its own, and these could eviscerate the T-Rex or tear its flesh from the bone. If Giganotosaurus could avoid the initial burst, its superior stamina, better agility, and extra mass would likely have given it an edge over the T-Rex. But if Rexy could get a clamp down on the leg or body of Giganotosaurus, this could inflict serious damage, possibly lethal. All in all, the two would be pretty well matched, and probably have figured out means of avoiding competition in the first place if they shared the same time and space. But this is based on current fossil records. There's only been around 30 T-Rex fossils found so far, and some recent estimates suggest the T-Rex could have been 25% bigger and up to 70% heavier than we first thought. Then again, the same may end up being true for Giganotosaurus. So, was this the largest carnivore ever? No. And here's why. In the ocean, sperm whales are the largest carnivores, and the largest carnivores on Earth. And these grow to about 18 meters long and 45 tons in weight. And the ocean's been home to larger predators than this in the past. And that is kind of pedantic, so let's narrow it down a little. Was Giganotosaurus the largest land carnivore ever to roam the Earth? No again. Spinosaurus is the largest known carnivorous dinosaur, and this was another theropod found in Africa around the same time as Giganotosaurus. 
This was a much longer animal, at least 16 meters in length, possibly up to 18 or more, by some estimates. But it was lighter, semi-aquatic, and likely hunted fish and other aquatic animals. The Giganotosaurus did have another contender, a much closer relative, and in fact the type genus for its family. Before we tell you what that is, we'd just like to say thanks for watching and remind you that you can really help the channel a lot by liking this video and clicking on the subscribe button. So, what was the largest carnivore ever to walk the earth? Also not live in the ocean, or be semi-aquatic. The truth is, we're never likely to know for sure, but if we were to guess, Cacarodontosaurus would be a good place to start. Cacarodontosaurus was an older relative of Giganotosaurus, and this one lived in Africa from about 100 to 94 million years ago, overlapping slightly but never quite sharing the same landmass with Giganotosaurus, and current estimates have it topping Giganotosaurus by a whopping 30 centimeters. That's right, Giganotosaurus maxed out at a puny 13 meters long, while this beast reached a formidable 13.3 meters. And it's also thought to have reached 15.1 tons, which is marginally more than its cousin. But these margins are so slim, and the fossil record is so scarce, this could flick in an instant as new discoveries are made. And besides, any one of these terrifying theropods is worthy of a crown. That's all for this video. As always, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.